Well, it's Saturday, June 29th, second to last day in June, 2024. And uh, we are going to look at Titus chapter 2, Matthew chapter 23, Proverbs chapter 6, and 2 Kings chapter 24. Um, the 16th verse of the first chapter of Titus, uh, we read yesterday, read the first chapter, says this, they claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. He's talking about false teachers and people in the last days, okay? People can run around saying, oh, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord and all that kind of stuff. But do their actions reflect that? Do their deeds demonstrate that? You know what? Uh, if you know the Lord, First of all, you're, not, you're probably not ever going to be perfect, okay, in your deeds. But your deeds will reflect that you know the Lord. If your deeds reflect that you don't, then you probably don't. So our deeds need to reflect that we, we know the Lord. And here's the bottom line. When we do know the Lord, when we do, our actions will, make, will be consistent. And it will make it obvious that we know the Lord. So the fruit that our life bears, okay? That's the big deal, the fruit that our life bears. It's okay to be a fruit inspector, but not a judge, okay? Hope you'll hang on to that. Let's pray, ask God to speak to us today and change us. Father, speak to us, change us from the inside out, make us different because we heard from you in your word. Do a work as we just read the Bible together, Father, and make it obvious that you moved do that with power, grace, and authority as you change us, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Titus chapter 2. You must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, and to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. Similarly, similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who Oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to, to try to please them, not to talk back to them. Slavery was a part of their, their world, okay? It, 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 at least in America, it's not supposed to be a part of our world. But they were supposed to be subject to their masters. That's what they were stuck with. And it, it, in other places, it says, if you can be free from it, go ahead and be free. Verse 10. Not to steal from them, but to show them that that, uh, but to, sh to show that they can be fully trusted, so that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in the present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify it for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These then are the things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. This is the seven woes, okay? This is a powerful chapter. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. You, um, so you must obey them and, and do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Whoa, you know when it gets powerful is when you practice what you preach. Preach it and then practice it. People have an example to follow. Wow. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move to move them. 
Everything they do is done for men to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted in the market pl marketplaces and to have men call them rabbi. <laughs> but you are not to be called rabbi, for you have only one master and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. D you know what this said? Don't get all hung up on titles. It's a bunch of nonsense. I've had titles, have them now. I don't care. I could care less about them. You know, pastor, reverend, I do not uh, adhere to at all. The reverend pops up one time in the Bible in the King James Version in a psalm. I forget where right now. And guess who's reverend? God. We're just folks. Titles are just a bunch of nonsense. Be careful with that. Nor are you to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. We ought to be humble and just be a teacher if you are, you know. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a hell as, as, as you are. Woe to you, blind guides. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound in his oath. You blind fools, which is greater, the gold of the temple that makes the gold sacred. You also say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift on it, he is bound by his oath. You bind, you blind men, which is greater, the gift or, or the altar that makes the gift sacred. Therefore, he who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And he who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you've neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a nap but swallow a camel. <laughs> Woe to you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the out on the on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our forefathers, we would not have been, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of the sin of your forefathers. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers. Some of them you will kill and crucify, others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so upon you will come the, all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I've longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see the Son of Man again until, until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That would be at the triumphal entry. And then he gets into the signs of the ends of, of the age in, verse, in chapter 24, which we'll look at tomorrow. Proverbs chapter six, the great book of Proverbs.
My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you struck hands in a pledge for another, if you have been trapped by what you said and ensnared by the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, to free yourself. Since you've fallen into your neighbor's hands, go and humble yourself, press your plea with the neighbor. Allow no sleep and no slumber to your, to your eyelids. In other words, get it done now. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. A scoundrel and villain who goes about with, with a corrupt mouth, who winks his eye and signals with his feet and motions with his fingers, who plots evil with deceit in his heart, who always stirs up dissent, dissension. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. My son, keep your father's commands commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching bind them on your heart forever fasten them around your neck when you walk they will guide you when you sleep they will watch over you when you awake they will speak to you for these commands are a lamp this teaching is a light and the corrections of discipline are the way of life Keeping you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of the wayward wife. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty or, or let her captivate you with her eyes. For the prostitute reuse, reduces you to a loaf of bread and the adulteress preys upon your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So is he who sleeps with another man's wife. The one who touches her will not, will, will go uh, the one who touches her will go, okay, so is he who sleeps with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving. Yet, if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it costs him all the wealth of his house. But a man who commits adultery lacks judgment. Whoever does so destroys himself. Blows and disgrace are his lot and his shame will never be wiped away. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any comp compensation. He will refuse the bribe, however grave, however great it is. And in 2 Kings chapter 24. 2 Kings chapter 24. During Jehoiakim's reign, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded the land, and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. But then he changed his mind and rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. The Lord sent Babylonian, Aramean, Moabite, and Ammonite raiders against him. He sent them to destroy Judah in accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by his servants, the prophets. Surely these things happened to Judah according to the Lord's command in order to remove them from the presence because of the sins of Manasseh and all he had done, including the shedding of innocent blood. For he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord was not willing to forgive. As for the other events of Jehoiakim's reign and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Jehoiakim rested with his fathers, and Jeho Jehoiakim, his son, succeeded him as king. The king of Egypt did not march out from his own country again, because the king of Babylon had taken all his territory from the wadi of Egypt to the Euphrates River. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of Elnathan. She was from, the, from Jerusalem. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as, just as his father had done. 
At that time, the officers of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, advanced on Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And Nebuchadnezzar himself came up to the city while his officers were besieging it. Jehoiakim, king of Judah, his mother, his attendants, his nobles, and his officials all surrendered to him. In the eighth year of the reign of the king of Babylon, he took Jehoiakim prisoner. As the Lord had declared, Nebuchadnezzar removed all the treasures from the temple of the Lord and from the royal palace and took away all of the gold articles that Solomon, king of Israel, had made for the temple of the Lord. He carried into exile all Jerusalem, all the officers, fighting men, and all the craftsmen and artisans, a total of 10,000. Only the poorest people of the land were left. Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiakim captive to Babylon. He also took from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother, his wives, his officials, and the leading men of the land. The king of Babylon also deported to Babylon the entire force of 7,000 fighting men, strong and fit for war, and a 1,000 craftsmen and artisans. He made Mataniah, uh, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother's name was Hamutal, daughter of Jeremiah. She was from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as Jeho Jehoiakim had done. It was because of the Lord's anger that all this happened to, Jer to Jerusalem and Judah, and in the end, he thrust them from his presence. Now Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. I think this is 586 BC. Bad things happen because of false worship. That's how it always works out. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us. Change our lives from the inside out by the truth we find in your word. Do a work in our lives, Father, because we heard from you is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.